This is a 600 watt flash and it's priced reasonably well. It's 399 US dollars. So when you compare it to the other flash that is $250 more, the question is, does it have just as much power? Hey everybody, Matthew here with another review. This time, Newer sent me a brand new flash that they have. It's called the i6TEX. It's a wireless TTL with high speed sync flash. It actually also comes with a controller. And I figured, why not bring it out to one of my real estate shoots and test it out. Okay, so the way I use this flash is I usually walk around and I light up different parts of the room and then I'll bring them into post and I'll blend them. So as you can see here, I'm walking around this kitchen and I'm flashing different areas and then I'll bring these back into post. And some of the things that I noticed right off the bat is how much light power actually came out of this flash through the photos once I looked at them. So let's get into a little bit more details about this flash and tell you what I like and dislike about it. First of all, the build. The build is actually really well. It's actually kind of aluminum. Um, all the way around here where the clamp is for the bones mount is very well built. The switch is basically on the side, just like pretty much most of the other flashes. The battery compartment is actually on the top. Now, this is one of the things I dislike about this is the fact that this battery doesn't have any indicator. So I have no idea how much power is left. Whereas with the Godox, I can push the button and it will light up and I'll see how much power I have left. So that is one downside to that. Now, I'm not really sure on how long this battery lasted. I didn't really get to shoot it that much more for the rest of the day, so I can't give you kind of a breakdown of how many hours it lasts. So now the push on and off button is actually located on the bottom right here. And they did a good job. They did it recess, so you can't accidentally hit it. You know, it's in a good location, so I, I actually like that. My second gripe about this is all the controls that are on the back, although they're very easy to read, the push buttons feel really good, um, I don't like the fact that I can't place this and rest it on a table. If I want to move this into a room and just push it down, I can't do that. All right guys, so one of the things that I do like about this is that it has a modeling lamp and it's actually pretty bright. You could actually use this if you needed to light a subject up, use it for some video work. It's great, I love the fact that it, it's on there. However, I wasn't able to figure out how to control and dim the brightness of that modeling lamp. I wish that would be a feature that they added. That would be pretty cool if we can actually just dim it down and control it. Now on the back, you also have the cell, so you can use this as a slave. You also have the input for uh, an, a sync cable if you want to go right from the camera into the back of the sync cable on this unit. Now you can also have your channel ID. It has um, different channels that you can go up to, so if you have multiple flashes around, you can control each and every one of these flashes. And on the controller that comes with it, again, this is a TTL version, so you can set this up as a TTL. This model here is from Sony, and as you can see, the pin configuration is for Sony. They do have the Canon and they do have the Nikon. This unit, one of my other gripes about this is when this is placed on top of the camera, you can't see any of the buttons. Um, you can't see any of the settings because it's so flat. You, and if you're up high, you really kind of have to look to see this. So what I like about the Godox, for example, is it's actually tilted slightly on an angle so you can actually see what's on the screen. So that's one of my other gripes. Let's talk about the quality of this flash. Now I'm not gonna get into Lumen's power and how much it has versus, let's say the Godox AD400 to 600, but I will tell you this, this is a 600 watt flash and it's priced reasonably well. It's 399 US dollars. So when you compare it to the other flash that is $250 more, the question is, does it have just as much power? For the last two years, I've been using the Godox system, and as a lot of you are familiar with, they have the Godox 600, now they have the new Godox Pro uh, 600, now they have an 8400. Now that's the flash that I use relatively often. So this is the 400, I also have the 600, but I did a comparison to the 400 and the 600 because I wanted to see, bang for your buck, are you getting as much power out of the 600 as the 400? 
and we're gonna show you some test shots and let you decide. Again, I'm not getting into the technical aspects about how much lumens power comes out of it, but I did take some photos and we did in studio here to show you how much power comes out of these two flashes, 400 and 600. This is $650, this is $400. So there's a $250 price difference between these. When we're talking about build quality and everything on the Godox, again, it's really built. It's a little bit more plasticky than this one here, which is more of aluminum casing. But what I like about the Godox is I can put this on its back end and let it just sit there. So that's something I wish newer actually could have done is they could have put the controls on the side or on the top just allowing that. Those are just little pet peeves that I had just because I've been using them. So I know my workflow, I actually will put this on top of a table sometime and I just can't do that. All right guys, so one of the other little things that we'll talk about here is the light stand mount. So this one here comes with a little bit of a bigger handle. Um, it is made of, feels like it's made out of plastic. There's parts of it that are aluminum, parts that are plastic. The handle itself I know is a little bit weaker. This is all made out of aluminum. The, the actual turning knob here is made out of plastic but it is what it is. I really don't have a preference between the two and I don't think there's one that's better than the other. I love that Godox put the handle right at the back because for me, when I walk around, I can hold it and I can hold it up in the air. If I'm picking it up from the ground, I can actually pick it up and do whatever I want with it, mount it on top of a light stand. Whereas with the uh, newer, you're actually gonna have to pick the whole thing up. There's nothing to physically grab it. All right, so if you're a real estate photographer like me and you're looking to buy a flash and you're trying to figure out which one to go with, 600 watts of power versus the 400 watt power uh, Godox, again, based on our testing and from what I saw, the power output is relatively about the same. But when you're trying to save some money, this is $250 less. Um, if you can get around the fact that you can't mount it on, on the bottom end, um, you don't have the battery indicator lights that you can kind of figure out how much power is left, I'm not going to say not to buy this. My conclusion is I would use this on field. I did use it. It worked well from a lighting standpoint. The power output was great. Um, the build quality is great. So yes, between the two of these, I personally have the Godox line because a lot of my other flashes can all sync up with my controller. All right, guys, so I hope that was helpful. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Until next time. So if you like that video and you wanna see more, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook.